Oh, so fascinating when it comes to our incredible world. And we're sticking to it now. And we're talking about five matriculants who secured a trip to Antarctica through pioneering explorer, motivational speaker, and author Rian Mansa's Matrix in Antarctica campaign. And they return home with a wealth of knowledge on climate change. Now, the five lucky matriculants were chosen out of 3,000 entries. And one of those chosen matrix was climate change activist Ayaka Malitafa. And she's from Kailiche in the Western Cape. And this morning, Ayaka, Rian, and of course our Two Oceans Aquarium Education Foundation CEO and our marine scientist and physio physiologist Marika Muson is also joining us to tell us more about their adventures and the experiments in the Antarctica. Guys, good morning. Firstly, I'm sitting here with absolute jealousy because I remember a few months ago chatting to you all and you hadn't even chosen any participants yet and now you're back. So, oh, firstly, welcome That's back. Full, welcome home. Cheers, man. It's like full circle. It's amazing. <laughs> you know, I think we feel the same way. We dreamed this thing and, yeah. you know, and it was a reality and, and, a, and a huge success. And I remember even just looking into your eyes before the trip and you were just like kids with <laughs> pure excitement. I was trying to see if I could get back into matric to join you. <laughs> but I see you've brought Tayata along as well, which is incredible because I mean out of what it sounds seems like 3,000 applicants and entries she was one of the lucky few of course <laughs> but what is it that stood out about her that you knew like I know she's going to be on the team well one thing I think that you'll learn about Ayaka and I think the um, Mareka will uh, agree is just that um, you know her guts and determination what we liked uh, for me personally when we were um, doing the selection process with Ayaka already was driving her own programs you know she wasn't waiting for other people i think being 18 years old and especially in a time of like covid and everything's just up Chaos, in the air yeah. um you know yaka still has that um that that laser vision she knows what she wants um and she was super super enthusiastic and put a lot of effort in her application i think for us it was almost a no-brainer and also, I mean, we were so excited and it was even better than we thought. It was like mind blowing. And what was really nice about all five of the students is we could learn from them. So I learned a lot from Ayaka. Oh, She's nice. a champ. Yes. <laughs> and nice. we had loads of fun. So right attitude, most incredible continent ever. I like want to be an ice person. Oh, it was <laughs> like just amazing. And I mean, the memories you guys made, guys made as a team as well. I mean, just looking at you and how you're chatting to each other, it seems like so much has happened. But Ayaka, I've got to ask you, from first-hand experience, I mean, coming from this world of chaos, going all the way to such a beautiful place and uh, everything that you did, talk me through it. How was the experience, the experiments and everything else? I mean, what can you share with us? It was absolutely mind-blowing. I tell you, the pictures of Antarctica don't justify how magnificent and beautiful that place is. And like, we had like expectations of Antarctica. We thought we were going to just see ice miles and miles and miles. But just seeing that diversity in Antarctica, seeing the different um, textures of snow, it was really mind-blowing, especially from someone that hasn't seen snow before. Um, so definitely, even the experiments we conducted, um, the water sampling, the water testing, um, collecting some litter in Antarctica, it was really, really mind-blowing to see how beautiful that place was. Was, and me being able to experience that with these amazing people was truly, truly inspiring. <laughs> and I was just, I'm thinking to myself, I'm hearing you, I can hear the energy, I can hear that this was an experience. How many times have you told this story to your friends or since you've gotten home? I can imagine. <laughs> a, lot. <laughs> a lot, definitely a lot. Like, how can I not share this experience? Yeah. Definitely. I'm even encouraging some of them to go and apply. It's really the most amazing experience that you can um, experience as a great tough learner, especially here in South Africa. I love it. And I think that's exactly it. The fact that you went makes you the inspiration for others and you sharing that story encouraging them to go and the one thing I, I love to encourage and I think it's so awesome is that each and every one of you is an activist for climate change and Nature Boy at Heart I, I, I'm so so close to this and it's so important to me but I've got to ask you that question and maybe you can teach Mzanzi at the same time why is this so important right now especially? So Antarctica as a continent is an amazing, it's almost like a giant laboratory. You know, it's unique, it's still protected. And we learn so much from climate by looking at what's happening there. And even through our, we did a, a litter cleanup. Is, it's something that we do here all the time. Is there, there, was, is there litter in There Antarctica? was actually, oh, yeah. Wow, that's sad I mean, we collected like... like over 900 pieces of litter. We even used the, the Beach Cop app. I think it's the first time ever that it's been used on the seventh continent. Yeah. So to create that awareness and say, you know what, we, we shouldn't just protect Antarctica, which is actually very well protected. We should protect the whole planet. And being, I mean, that just seeing that, that infinity of ice was just so beautiful and I just keep thinking like 
you know, the whole world is beautiful. So let's do whatever we can. And it was such an inspiration. And, and having these students, they go, we've only been back for two days. You know? Oh, wow. So, so, so having all of us tell their story and inspiring people. And I really want to go back. I need to figure out how am I going to go back and how are we going to encourage people to, to just really appreciate nature in any way. Because I'm actually like a sun-loving, like more tropics kind of person. But now that ice, I want, we swam. We swam in the ice <laughs> water. Really? A little Vermont session. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> totally, totally. It was incredible. So, yeah, climate change is real. And, and we, we saw it there. I mean, it was actually really warm. Yeah. It was like midsummer, <laughs> sun's out. We were cold, but for Antarctica, it was warm. So we could feel global warming while there. We could see it. Um, all the, the crew there we spoke to, they can see it because they obviously spend yeah. more time there. And that is frightening. You know, I always thought climate change, climate emergency takes yeah. a, a longer time. It's happening every day. So people need to be aware, but oh my word, it was just unbelievable. Wow, that's, uh, I love that sentiment. I think Antarctica is basically like a working model and now we can use it for the rest of the continents and, and keep implementing. So I've got to say, Rian, Matrix in Antarctica definitely seems like a success, man. But why is it so important to you? Why is, why you keep going through with uh, creating these opportunities for these kids? I mean, what does it really mean to you? There is so much, there's way more pleasure in giving than there is in receiving. So yeah. to be able to give people the opportunity makes me feel great. And, um, you know, we, we don't need to be so politically correct where we realize that joy. So um, for me, um, selfishly, it's awesome to see the changes. I think in those metrics, it was five days, but I'm telling you now their, their, their view, never mind their conversations over a dinner table being about Antarctica now, yeah. you know, their whole... Um, outlook I think for their future is so different but you know it comes down to actually the relationships you know I met um, Vasily and Marella um, about two years ago and um, they're the owners of ALCI that create this uh, logistics and the gateway to Antarctica for Cape Town or else we wouldn't be a gateway city and you know they're tough people you know they they made sure that uh, Matrix and Antarctica still happened even though we were in this COVID time. Um, but yeah, it's just wonderful to see the, the students go and to see Ayaka come back and that smile and um, she's gonna do great things. Oh, I can see it. I mean, five, five days of experience, but a lifetime worth of just absolute value. Guys, it's been an absolute pleasure to see you. Welcome back. Two days yeah. fresh from Antarctica and I can't wait to see more adventures. And I'm sure, Jan, you've got more incredible trips planned in the future, definitely. The second year. So, you know, it's a five-year plan that we've got. And, you know, we obviously need to just get the ball rolling again. But um, we'll be reaching out to the Matrix in South Africa for 2021. And we see if they can follow in the footsteps of these five guys. Oh, well, Marika, Ayaka and Jan, of course, guys, well done. And thank you for being activists for our planet in such a time of need. It's so encouraging to see you guys using your energy and your life for something so much bigger and so much more important. And to the rest of Mzanzi, of course, as well, thank you so much for joining us. And you can tune in again as uh, Mareka and Rian will be doing some more adventures. And you can even chat to Ayaka about some of the experiences too. But stick around as we join you after the break for some more. <laughs>